I'm in candle right now, man. <laughs> All right, let's get a pop. And uh, Captain Day, that's all I got for you right now, man. Get, get uh, your name. You're live. Yeah, I'm Captain uh, Dave Bridges. Bridges. I uh, live here in uh, Gainesville. Been in Gainesville about 11 years. Nice. And, um, you know, we're doing our big event. Doing our big event on Saturday. All right. Well, no, no, no. I was just getting your name. Okay. Right. I just wanted to make sure I wanted to address you properly. Okay. But, yeah, let's go ahead and get it popping up. All right. I'll get my mic. Why am I here? Oh, okay. I'm like, I'm tripping over here, man. Like, where am I getting that feedback from? All right, we're good. All right, man, let's go ahead and get it popping, man. It's, uh, what's going on, Florida, Gainesville? It's your boy Jake Jenkins right here on Florida Hip Hop Radio. And we have a very, very, very special treat for the city, for the state. We have uh, none other than Mr. Captain Dave Bridges in the building along with my, my partner, too, is around, man. He's going to be talking in a minute. Mr. Matt Bowman's in the building, y'all. But anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get it started. First of all, thank you for uh, coming through, Mr. Yeah, Bowman. man, no problem, no problem. Glad to be here this evening. Absolutely, absolutely. And to, um, can we just kind of start with a little background on yourself? I know that you're you're definitely a, 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 a pilot right now, a captain. But can you just kind of give us a background? Yeah, man, um... Born and raised in uh, Newark, New Jersey. Nice. Rich so, city. My family's yeah. from Plainfield. Yeah, you know. Um, grew up in Newark, New Jersey, man. And uh, I was that kid I was always looking up, man, since the age of seven. Wow. Um, always looking up, man, watching them airplanes, watching them airplanes. At the age of 13, man, played a little hooky from school, went up to the airport, cut about $40 worth of grass, watched about three, four airplanes, man, made me $80. Nice. And took my first lesson at 13. That's what I'm talking about. First flying lesson. Yeah, took my first nice. flying lesson at 13, man, pedaled my little bike up to the airport, right, cut that grass, watched that airplane, man. And, yeah. and the old man, he was like, all right, now that you're done, let's go fly. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you'd have made enough money to pay for the lesson. Right. So um, that's what I did, man, on the weekends. If I could scrape up enough money, man, I'd go fly. Uh, when I turned 16, I got a little job at Arthur Treacher's Fish and Chips. Bought me one of them little mopeds because they, they was real popular yeah, back in the yeah, day. Yeah. Bought me one of those, man. I'd ride that up to the airport, man, take my little Arthur Treacher money, right? <laughs> go fly for an hour or two. And um, my goal or my dream was to always go in the Marine. Okay. Right? I was like 10 years old, and I was like, man, I'm going to be a Marine aviator. Oh, right? Man. That's what I'm doing. Wow. Um, unfortunately, I was goof off in school, right? Cut up, acted a nut. So going to college out of high school was not an option. Okay. So I wound up going to summer school to get my diploma. Okay. And uh, went to Marines at the age of 17. Did my off-base college courses, off-duty, man. Was working on uh, fighters, you know, during the day. Educating myself at night. Right. Um... Did my time in the military, man, got out, drove trucks over the road, you know, saved a bunch of money, and um, lived out of the truck, sent my dad all the money. Right. And then once I saved up enough money, moved to Oklahoma, man, went to Spartan School of Aeronautics. The rest is history. Wow, man. The rest is history. Okay. So there was no stopping it. Well, let's talk a little bit about uh, the third annual Aviation Academy. So, um... I'm starting with it's it's the third one you have, and so let's right. start from uh, as if we're, we're uh, three years ago from this period. <laughs> well, what compelled you to even start this academy? Here? It was it was something I had started a long time ago when I was in flight school. Okay. When I was actually in college, what happened? I lived in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Okay. I lived on the south side of Tulsa, right. Which was a crip neighborhood. Okay. I actually lived in a crip neighborhood when I was going to college. Right, right, right. North side of Tulsa was Bloods. Oh. But it was a kid lived downstairs, right? And I used to see him sitting on the stoop all the time, right? All the time sitting on the stoop. And I was like, what's up with that, man? Why do you sit on the stoop all the time? Yeah. His uncle was a major crip, man, so he was always out in the street. Right. So his nephew was always sitting on the stoop waiting for him to come in. So I said, here's what we're going to do. 
I said, I'm going to get you an extra key. When you come home from school, you take that key. You go in my house, make yourself something to eat, do your homework, study. I go over your homework, make sure everything's straight. And, you know, you just stay here, man, until your uncle come home. And in the process of that, I asked him, I said, well, what do you want to do with your life? And he was like, Mr. Bridges, you'll never believe me, man. He said, because of who I am and where we come from, don't nobody take me serious. He said, I want to be a corporate lawyer. So I wow. said, okay, bet. So I got in the phone book, found me a corporate lawyer, went and saw a cat. And I was like, hey, man, do you know any African-American corporate lawyers? The guy said, yeah, I happen to know. Introduced me to the guy, said, I got this kid I want you to meet. And so, you know, we swapped information. I introduced him to this kid. He took the kid under his wing. Nice. And then he sent me some kids that were interested in aviation. Right. And so that's how I got started doing all of this was through, you know, just touching base with, you know, like meeting people like Matt on right. the fly. Right. You know, hey, man, this is what I do on the weekends. Oh, so it just so happens, this is what we do. All right, well, let's get together. Let's make that work. Wow. So when I got here to Gainesville, it was just an extension of what I had already done. Mm -hmm. And so I got together with Matt and Adrian Harper and a couple of other folks, and it was like, hey, man, uh, just bring me some kids, man. And one Saturday we got together at the airport, and we flew, what, about 15, 20 kids, right? One Saturday, and it just, it just progressed. Uh, so, and it just, it's been getting bigger and bigger. And you know, it's, you know, now we're in this, this position with the 100 black men mm. of uh, Greater Florida and Gainesville, Fly for the Culture. So now we're bringing a lot of entities together mm -hmm. to make this something to where Next year, we'd like to see it as a five-day event or a five-day wow. camp. Nice, nice, so, nice. Um, describe the actual event for us a little bit. What are the kids going to be? So, basically, um, from 9 to 3, there will be several different stations. We're going to have a full-motion simulator running. Um, Mr. Gary and Fort's going to have his simulator running down in his hangar. So, we'll have kids going through different stations. We're going to have my wife out there. She's a travel agent. Nice. So she'll be talking about travel. And we'll have folks from all different backgrounds from the aviation industry. Mm -hmm. So while I'm taking kids flying, the kids that are on the ground will be going to the different stations to learn about the different opportunities that exist in the aviation profession. That's awesome, man. Talk about the past year's events, man. Any takeaways, any success stories? Um. Yes, actually. Yeah, um, there was one young man, one young man, uh, Latino, young Latino brother. Um, he was he was not in the best of positions, right. and he went flying with me. And as a result of that, he just, you know, he got motivated, man. Mm. And, you know, he didn't go into aviation, but, you know, he got back in school, man, got his game right. Right, right, right. And that was the catalyst of right. the, so the right direction, man. You know, he's in college doing his, his little thing, and we keep in touch, you know, and it, it's like every now and then we get together and it's That's like, right, let's go man. fly, man. That's all right, man. Let's go do it. So even though they don't get into aviation, as long as we, you know, the kid is off the track, just right, like right, I right, was, right, right. I'm going to put him back on the track. And get them going to their destination, just like somebody did for me. So I'm just that's paying all right, man. Even the kid on the stoop, man. That was, that's that's amazing what you you know? you know. We need more of that. Um, let's talk a little bit about. Uh, well, I wanted to ask. Uh, and first, I want to thank both of you for your military service uh, and, and uh, what you guys uh, did for the country. Um, but is that a requirement to go into aviation? Would you suggest? Uh, no, no, it's not a requirement. Um, from the pilot perspective, if you don't, if you don't have a lot of money, right. I would suggest it. Right, right, right. I would suggest it because from a civilian perspective, first of all, you gonna spend a whole lot of money to go to school, mm. right? And a whole well, lot of money to, well, we'll put that know, on to do this, this flight, this flight training. Yes, sir. Then when you do get your first job. You better have family that loves you because you're going to be living at home. <laughs> right, you're right, right. you're going to be living at home. Now, um, my situation was different. 
my situation was different. I was far away from home. My first job, and remember, I'm from Newark, New Jersey. Uh, my first job was in Salt Lake City, Utah. Get out of here, man. So, <laughs> here, here I am. Here I am, this brother from the hood. Right, he was just like that. <laughs> and so what I did, because initially when you get into the flying game, right, and you get that first pilot job, trust trust and believe it, don't pay a lot. Uh, it, just, it just doesn't. Right. Okay. I would go, my first job at United Airlines, before I started flying for them, my first job at United, I was loading bags and mail. Wow. In the bottom of airplanes. Wow. Right? That's okay. what I did. So, you know, I was towing airplanes around. I was the guy that pushed the airplane back from the gate, uh -huh. right, when it was time to go. And I, before that, I'd load the, the luggage. <laughs> I'd yeah. load the luggage and stuff and uh, de-ice the airplane in the wintertime. Wow. De-ice the airplane. So from 4 to 8 in the morning, I would load bags, mail, de-ice airplanes, all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, we got to talk. We got to stop you right there. De ice the airplane. Yeah. What kind of process is that? What do you use? A, okay, a big so, blowtorch? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, we have a truck with uh, de ice fluid. And basically, ah, what it is, chemically. Basically, what it is is a modified version of antifreeze. Got it. And we heat it to a certain temperature and just spray the airplane down. Wow. Then we have another type of fluid that we coat the airplane with. So one, one fluid cleans the airplane, and then one fluid gives the protection. So while I'm taxiing out to the runway, the airplane won't get recovered with snow. Wow, that's that's amazing. That's something I would never consider. So, um, talk a little bit about uh, because you the, fly for the culture, um, and I and I presume uh, you, yourself as well. You guys kind of focus on the demographic. You guys are uh, minority teenagers. Talk about the demographics of pilots currently. You see a lot of. A lot of yourself up there in the skies? No. no we're, <laughs> right now, right now, we're just barely getting to about 2%. Oh, man. 2%. That's one out of so, 50. So, I have to think about this. There's roughly somewhere in the neighborhood of about 300,000 professional pilots mm -hmm. in this country. Mm -hmm. So, that means 300,000 individuals making a paycheck to go fly. Right. There might be maybe... Two thousand, maybe three thousand. Sheesh, okay. that's amazing. Um, so yes, so demographics are, are, are right now look like abysmal in my opinion. Let's talk about why. Uh, let's talk about the, uh, the advantages of uh, us coming from the hood, uh, uh, our, our Latino brothers and sisters, or uh, just minorities. Period, and and why this is an advantageous route to go. If I'm, I'm a seventeen year old, I don't know what to do with my life. Well. Let's look at it from a standpoint of, one, you're going to get to see things you ain't never seen before. Mm. Now, think about this. I, in, in, you know, it depends on who you are. Some people are going to say, oh, Dave grew up in the hood. Right, right, right. Right? Dave grew up in the ghetto. Right. See, that was home to me. I right, right. See it in the hood, but, uh, that was home. Agreed, right? agreed. When you traded for the world. Absolutely. It just depends on who you are. But, you know, for, for this discussion... Let's say, okay, Dave's that kid that grew up in the hood. I've seen places on the planet Earth mm. that I would have never dreamed of seeing wow. if it wasn't for this profession. Mm. There are places, there are countries that I've lived in, lived in, I visited, right. lived in, that if you had told me <laughs> when I was seven years old, Dave, you're going to be living in Dubai on a regular basis. Right. You're going to have a two-bedroom, two-bathroom mm. apartment in Dubai. Every two weeks, you're going to be in Dubai to go to work. Get out of here, man. Right? Dave. I'm in the, the wrong business, <laughs> man. The, mark, the, month, the months of February through April, you're going to go to Israel. And from the 1st to the 16th of the month, you're going to live in Israel. Every, for two weeks, for those three months. If you had have told me that when I was seven years old, I'd have been like, this, right? Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, travel. One, travel. Now, if you got to be, you have to be focused, right? right? You can't be chasing the dollars mm -hmm. in this business. Because I'm going to tell you, if you're chasing dollars in this business, you're going to get frustrated, right. you're going to get mad, and you're going to quit. Mm -hmm. you got to love this. Okay. You really do. you got to eat, sleep. This is what you live. This right. is what you dream, right? So if you love it, you're going to stay the course 
Now, when you get to my level where I am, now you're making that money, mm -hmm. right? You didn't chase it. It came to you. Yeah, because you, you focused on the right <laughs> thing. you focused on the right thing, yeah. and you didn't give up the dream because it was like, oh, I'm not getting it right out the gate. Hmm. I'm assuming the kid... Um, in North, and and Oklahoma was um, in these in these age range from twelve to eighteen. Yeah, he was about fourteen years old. Talk to, talk to me why y'all decided to focus on that 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 age range. Because that is the age where now you're starting to form a personality. Mm. You're starting to, now you're starting to think about what you want to do in life at that age. Right, range. right, right. You, you, you you're making decisions now. You mm -hmm. you know you're you're starting to branch out. On your own, get away from your parents, do this, do that. Well, now this is the age where you're vulnerable. You can be pulled from any direction. Right, right. You see what I'm saying? So that's why we focus on that age range because that's that age range where you can get caught up. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, yeah. you can be pulled in. You know, you can be pulled in any direction right. because you're at that age and you're vulnerable at that age. Mm -hmm. You know, because you go see things, and there are things, it's like, man, it look good to you. Man, I, I want that right there. Right, okay? right. I, I want what he got. That's brilliant, man. Let's talk a little bit about uh, Fly for the Culture. Um, I just want to, if you could, just describe the organization, what it's all about, and, uh, yeah, and now, its function and, and mission. Fly for the Culture was founded by Mr. Cortland Savage, who is a former naval aviator. Okay. And uh, young brother. He, he should be here this weekend, right, man? Right. He should be here this weekend. Mm -hmm. um, what happened was, you know, he did his time in the Navy, and he was pretty much just like the rest of us. You know, I'm going to pay it forward because, mm -hmm. you know, I was blessed enough to be in a position to where, you know, my parents could affect, you know, this outcome for me. So now, because I had that advantage, I'm going to get that advantage to others, mm -hmm. right? Because think about this. We're all born motivated, right? It's just that once we get school age, you know, the people that are supposed to lead us and guide us and teach us, those are the people that demotivate us by telling us what we can't do, mm. right? That's where we come in. Mm. Ah, you know, look at, look at me. Look at Dave Bridges, right? Didn't graduate high school, had to go to summer school, mm. right? But I'm still here. Absolutely. I'm still standing. So nothing's impossible, right? So, you know, I don't care what those people say. We're telling you different. Nice. You can do it as long as you have the drive, desire, and focus. If you have that, we're going to push you right on down the road. We're going to kick you in the play, introduce you to the right people, wow. and get you moving. That, that that confidence and that support and confidence, man, it, it it makes a world of difference. Especially like you said, that at that age, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, ironically, I heard uh, Marion Barry say that, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, in 14, they can go. Well, it's, that's yeah, the that's the area. Good. And that was pretty much that age where I was like, okay, I'm gonna go this route, even though I still have this goal. Yes, sir. I went a certain route, right, right, right. and I did some things, you know, if you. If we was to sit down and talk over the air, <laughs> right. you'd be like, what? <laughs> you did what as a right, kid? Right, right, right. Right? So, you know, and I was 14. Mm -hmm. And it was like, okay, I'm going to hang out with these cats. But on the weekend, I'm going to go do this. Nice. So you mentioned Mr. Uh, Cortland Savage. Yeah. He's the CEO and founder of Fly for right. the Culture. And um, he's going to be at the event on Saturday uh, um, from 9 to 3.30. I mean, yeah. 9 to 3 as well. Um, at the University Air Center, which is at 4701 Northeast 40th Terrace. Um, could y'all talk a little bit about Mr. Uh, James Albury and what he'll be talking about Friday night, tomorrow night? Oh, James Albury, man. He he is one of only three black astronomers or wow. three African-American astronomers in this country. Get out of here. He's right here? Yeah, he's right here again. No, I didn't know that. And he runs the planetarium over at Santa Fe. Right, right, right. right. So he I had no clue, there. man. Yeah, I've he been will, there. He will be oh, there. Black man right now. Yes. Wow. He will be there talking about astronomy and you know his road to success and you know. Gotta be here. We're just gonna have all kind of people from all different backgrounds. So the bottom line is, is to get your attention through aviation. I don't care where you go or what you do. 
But our job is to show you that there's a different way. Mm -hmm. Whether it be aviation, whether it be astronomy, whether it be business, you know, medicine. The sky's the limit, man. Yes, the world is your oyster is out there. But you got to go out there and get it because nobody's going to come knock on your Sit door up. and hand it to you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Nobody's going to do that. Mm -hmm. You got to go out there and get it. You got to be hungry, man. Mm. You, Or as they say, you got to be thirsty. <laughs> you ain't thirsty if you ain't going to get it. That's so good. Um, I, I, I just think that what makes a world of difference is knowing that you got uh, support and resources and people that are really uh, in your corner. Um, so that's that's why I really want to give you guys kudos there. Um, you guys are still registered for this event. Uh, are we still? Is it yeah. close? Yeah. All right. And um, to register, uh, I have it here. You guys, uh, you can go to your Facebook page, um, the 100, 100 Black Men of Greater Florida, GNV, INC, or the um, well, yeah, I'll just go there. I, I think that's the best place to go. That's the easiest for way the, to do yeah, it. the easiest way. The website's right on there. Um, uh, let's talk. I want to talk a little bit about how to uh, the average person. I might not have a teenage daughter, or son. You know, uh, mm -hmm. I might not. Uh, you know, uh, you know, I might like just be working at Taco Bell or something. How can I be involved? How can I help? How can I donate? How can I access you guys? Anything we can do there? Can I, did I, did I catch you off guard? There? No, no. <laughs> Actually, even you know, even if you worked at Taco Bell, right? Taco Bell is not your ultimate goal. Right. That's where you are. You going somewhere else? You can still talk to the kids about mm. how that's a vehicle wow. to get from where you are to where you want to be. Hey, look at me. This is where I am right now. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. That's but all right. This is where I'm going. Right. Right, right, right. You know, this is where I'm going to go. This is where I'm going to wind up. Got it. Right? Um, If we could, uh, and you can chime in if you'd like, Matt, on this one. Can we talk a little bit? Uh, but I'd like, I'd like to ask you, uh, Captain Dave. Talk a little bit about the 100 black men of Greater Florida, uh, the GMV, uh, and INC. I'd like to say the whole thing. Uh, um, talk a little bit about uh, what it is, what you guys are all about. Basically, you know? we're the newest chapter here in uh, Janesville, Florida. Okay. There are chapters all across America. And what uh, 100 black men does is pretty much what we are doing. You know, we are out in the community. Mm. We are a positive example of black males. Wow. In your town, wow. in your city, right in your neighborhood. That's all right, right? Man. Because you don't see us, you don't hear about us, right? So now we have to make ourselves visible to you, right? So you understand that despite what you see on TV, despite what you see in the news, despite what you see on the newspaper, there are a whole lot of us out here doing it the right way, right? So that's the way we do it. You know, by, by by starting chapters all across the country and basically paying it for mm. right? No matter what walk of life you're in, what um, what what profession you're in, whether you own a business, no matter what you do, that's what the 100 Black Men is all about. Yes, sir. We bring black men from all different walks of life, wow. and we go out in our community, and we show our young people positive examples of black men. Mm, representation that's right. and service. There you go. I love that, man. Oh, it's, that's, it's, it's, it's cool. It's cool to be successful. It's, it's, <laughs> it's damn cool to be successful, man. <laughs> you know? Hey, I'm with you on that, OG. Um, 100blackmenfla.org. Uh, that's to access, to donate, to just uh, support in any way. Um, I want to talk a little bit before, before we get out of here. I want to talk a little bit, lastly, about the, Avi the Aviation Academy. I want to really kind of hone in on that. Um, so Friday, we're at the Cape Museum. Right. Going to have a speaker, Mr. Uh, James uh, Alberry, the director of the Kika Silver Planetarium at, at Santa Fe. I did not know it was a black planetarium. I mean, a, a black <laughs> director of the planet. I've been there a few times, man. I just I had no clue. So I, I'd love to meet him, actually. But Friday night, uh, tomorrow night, 6 p.m. to 7.30, and then Saturday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., we're at the University Air Center at 4701 Northeast 40th Terrace. 
And that sounds like when all the funds going down. Yeah, right? all the funds going down. Right. Right. Weather permitting. And you guys are providing you food know, and all out there, yeah, right? It looks yeah. like we're going to have decent enough weather to get it done. Nice. So, yeah, that's when all the funds going to go down. And basically the premise of what's going down in the cave museum is if you can see it, you can be it. Wow. Because remember, our young people are visual. Yes, sir. You know, they strive to be what they see. Mm. Okay. So if they see the positive images and the positive role models, that's what they're going to strive right. to be. Right. I'm going for that. I'm all for that, man. Well, again, man, thanks a lot. Uh, I really appreciate what okay. you guys are doing. Is that something we need to announcement? Yeah, yeah. Um, also, at the at the Aviation Academy on Saturday, we're going to have SkyWest Airlines. Oh. They're going to be talking about opportunities. You know, Wow. At, at the entry level, of the airline business. Okay. McDonald's is going to be there. Of course, University Air Center, which is the flight school. Right. Now, so now, we got the, the flight school, which is where you get started. And then we got SkyWest Airlines. Yeah. After you graduate. There you go. They set it all up for you, go. man. And then we got Santa Fe College. Yeah. So, there it is right there. You go into Santa Fe College. You're getting your little flight time. We got SkyWest Airlines. So, you get your degree, you get your fly time, there's Sky West right mm, there. That's all right, man. So now we're going to show you the whole path from start to finish. Yeah. And McDonald's is going to be there with food, and they've donated money, or they've donated funds, so, you know, it's it's going to be a fun day. I'm loving this, man. I'm really loving this. I have My, my son and daughter will be there, and I, I, I want to go, too. Well, hey. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? It, it's that you say that, you know, once I get the kids done... You know, weather permitting, right? I'm going to get some of the parents. Oh, you know, man. And get them up there. That's all right, man. Just so they see. That's cool, man. Well, again, I just want to say thank you to both of you. I want to say thank you to the 100 Black Men of Greater Florida, um, as well as uh, Flight for the Culture, as well as, uh, you know, Mr. James Albury and uh, all of you guys, man. Because, I mean, um, this is the representation that we talk about all the time. But, um, you know, uh, we just can't get enough of it, man. It makes me giddy a little bit. We just, we just got to get our young people out there and expose them to people like us. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. You yes, know, sir. expose them to people like us and expose them to the different opportunities like my father. My father had his own radio show for 46 years. Nice. That's what I'm talking so, about. you know, it, it is my, my father-in-law, who Matt met, wow. 100 years old, just passed away. Sorry. He was an original Tuskegee Airman. Come on, man. So... You know, wow! So I had that, plenty of robots. That was local. They, yeah? all lived in, they were all yeah. Local I, right I, here. I heard about that. They were all local right here. That's all right, man. That's real history, right there. Man. Well, again, man, thank y'all for what y'all doing. Can't wait until tomorrow. Uh, I'll definitely be. I'm canceling my show tomorrow to be there. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'll definitely be in the cage. And um, yeah, thanks again, man. But again, uh, everybody who's watching um, or listening to register. Registration is still open for teenagers twelve to eighteen. I would go to the Facebook page of the 100 Black Men of Greater Florida or um, 100 Black Men org. I'm sure you guys I can probably find the, um, I can find the URL there too. And you know, just because it's your show, you know, for your audience and your audience only, That's my if man. you're not 12 to 18, if you come to the site, oh, if you listen to this broadcast, Good, go man. ahead and register this and guy, we'll take care of This you. guy, man, he's like Bob Barker, man. He got the, <laughs> it's the price anyway. already. He's right over there. This is the man right here. Just register anyway. Yeah, exactly. yeah absolutely. Wait, man, much love to y'all, man. And uh, I'll see y'all tomorrow, man. Hey, uh, coming up next hour, we have uh, the Dream Defender. And uh, we're gonna be talking about knowing your rights. Y'all keep it locked right here. Oh. Let me get my